What is going on, everybody? 2023 quarterback prospect, uh, really interesting recruit, Ryan Brown, joins the show. Very excited to chop it up with him on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what is going on, everybody? want to thank you so much for tuning in to Locked On Badgers. Make it one of your first listens every day. As we continue to build this community, I'm incredibly appreciative of the support. I also want to thank LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. And as promised, we got a really fun show. We got Ryan Brown, 2023 quarterback recruit, um, just got, coming off his official visit to Madison, joining the show. Ryan, man, what's up? Thanks for joining the show. Yes, sir. Happy to be here. So I want to get into this. Um, it's not your first time to Madison. You've been to Madison before, but it is your first game day experience. Just talk me through what that was like. Right. Yeah, it was. I was super excited. I got there early in the morning that day and I got a really good feel for the town and the energy was unreal. The energy was awesome. It was it was crazy. It was everybody was walking around, checking it out. And the game was unreal. The atmosphere was probably the best I've seen in a college football game. And it wasn't a close game, which was mm -hmm. the craziest thing. I couldn't even help to think how how awesome that atmosphere would be in a close game. And it was it was a great experience. When you first get to Madison, who talk through some of the logistics of it. Who meets you? Who takes you to places? Who is your host? Um, I got to the stadium about three and a half hours before the game. Um, they had a tailgate set up for some of the recruits that were coming. Uh, the director of recruiting, Mickey Turner, greeted me when I got there. He talked to me for a while. We got some food. Um, and then Where'd he, you eat? he showed me. What, what kind of food did you get? They So they had a uh, like a buffet out with uh, they had burgers. They had like chicken tenders. They had cookies. They had water, Gatorade, a bunch of stuff. Um, and it was great. The food was actually really good, which it's usually not. When you have those like buffets that visits, they're usually not mm -hmm. the food's usually not that good, but it was good. Um, so I enjoyed that. Um, and then we checked out the uh, stadium, not just the stadium, but the facilities. We went past the indoor. We went through the uh, the weight room, checked it all out, and it was awesome. So what what about Mickey? So Mickey Turner is pretty new in this position. Um, he hasn't been a recruiting director for a long time. What kind of energy did you get from him as a recruiting director? Maybe compared to other places you've been or other people you've talked to. I like the energy he gives because I feel like he he played, right? Oh, yeah. He played tight end at Wisconsin. Yep. Yeah. He, you can just tell he's played. The way he kind of talks, he kind of – he gets football. He kind of understands where you're coming from. When I got there, he was talking to me about my recent game from the day before. So it was cool to be able to talk to him about something like that. And it didn't really feel like he was a coach. It just felt like he was a, another guy just talking to me. What about any other coaches that you talked about? Kind of what was the the vibe from the coaching staff that you were able to interact with? It was good. I talked with uh I talked with coach Ingram in the the locker room after the game and we just talked about the game and he said it felt good. He was he was happy to get that first win under his belt and he's looking forward to uh It was actually funny. He said my head's spinning. I'm just thinking about the next one now. I'm ready to go. Yep. So that was that was cool. Uh, to get to hear how, how he thinks. And that's exactly how I think, too, after a game is just on to the next one. Just moving on to the next chapter. I love it. Um, what about the stadium? What was what was your impression of being inside Camp Brown? You said it was electric. Um, was there anything that was surprising to you about the game day atmosphere, about the stadium, about the experience? I wouldn't say anything was surprising because I've heard a lot about it. And my dad had played there twice in his career. He uh, He started his college career at Northwestern. And he mm. played at Camp Randall twice. So he kind of told me it was crazy. So I was looking forward to it, and it, it was awesome. So it was kind of everything I expected, but I expected a lot. Let's let's talk about your uh, recruitment really quick, if you don't mind. And I told I was talking to you before the show about this. It is very surprising to me watching the film, talking to people like John Garcia, you know, Locked On's recruiting insider at Sports Illustrated, uh, who named you one of the sleepers in the 2023 class. It's very surprising to me that your recruitment isn't a little hotter. Is there... Do you get a bit of a chip on your shoulder um, thinking you have to constantly prove yourself because you won a state title in Florida at 8A? 
You have a uh, really good film. You have people that follow recruiting call and you one of the sleepers of the 2023 class. Is that, does that give you a chip on your shoulder? Feel like you still have to prove yourself here? Right. I would say yes and no, because at the end of the day, all I can do is continue to work on myself and be, become better. I can't, I can't force the school to offer me. I can't make a school want me. All I can do is get better every day. So that was kind of my mindset going into the off season when I reclassified was, Hey, you're not, I can't sit here and just think, why aren't they looking at me? I, I need to do something about it. So I put in a lot of work the off season and it's paying off to start, start this season. And um, I'm going to continue to play how I've been playing and just prove myself. I, I know what I can do. So I don't have to prove it to myself, but I just want to be able to show everybody else what I already know. So that's a pretty mature mindset. Does that come from your parents? Your dad used to play Northwestern, or is that something that you've kind of developed on your own through, through other people, their mentors? It's from my dad, absolutely. My dad played – he started his career at Northwestern for two years. He transferred to Boston College. He played with Doug Flutie, and then he played four years in the NFL, and he's trained me my whole life. So he's – He's taught me everything, and he keeps my head straight, and he, he's done a good job. What, what a resource, man, to be able to lean on in the recruiting process. You know, a guy like that that's Absolutely. played it. Those are big-time programs. Um, yep. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about, because this is something that comes up occasionally with quarterbacks that come through Madison. A lot of quarterbacks, and, and I don't blame them, they, they want to huck it around, right? They want to go four out, five out. Uh, Wisconsin's never going to be that. Now, Paul Christ wants balance. You know, the, he, it's not the triple option, but – is that something that uh, dissuades you? Is that something that makes you think for a second if you want to be part of an offense that is, you know, leans on the run game quite a bit? Um, I don't mind it. After watching the game, I feel like the way they ran their offense was great. I mm -hmm. think in the NFL, they're going to go under center. They're going to run the ball. That's the most important part of the game is to set the tone with the run game. And they threw the ball really effectively when they did throw the ball because they, they set it up and they – Graham made some great throws in the game, and they were not easy throws. So the concepts they, they give the quarterback are still advanced. Um, they might not throw the ball as much as some other teams, but when they do throw, they're going to be efficient, and that's what matters. So uh, I, I'm not bothered by it. Yeah, and he was 14 to 16 in a blowout. I mean, he would have – and quite frankly, right. one of those was a, a drop on third down. Like, he easily could have been 15 to 16. And you're talking right. about scheming people open. Like um, Bobby Ingram did a great job. Graham Mertz was awesome. I, I want to finish with this on your Wisconsin uh, unofficial visit. When you're when you're there watching the game and you're seeing Graham Mertz go through his reads, go through his progressions, are you picturing yourself in those situations? Is that are you seeing yourself kind of out there being able to make those same type of throws? Absolutely. That's actually funny because the whole game I was talking to my dad saying, "Oh, they're in an even front here. The backers backers coming off the edge. I would side protection this way." And that's just the way I think because of him. He's kind of set that in my – he's ingrained that into my mind my whole life is to think about the game that way. So the whole entire time I was th watching him, watching how he went through progressions, doing my best to uh, to kind of keep up with what he was doing, uh, doing my best to identify the defense. Obviously, I didn't know what play, plays they were running. But that's that's how that's how my mindset is with the game is – everything's you can learn from everything and that's mm -hmm. what i was doing no oh, that's awesome no I, I bet you that was a great game to go to um coming up next with ryan brown we're gonna keep him on here as long as possible um, i'm gonna run out of time before i run out of questions i promise you that uh, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about his game dive into some of his strengths where he thinks he might need to improve a little bit that's coming up next on locked on badgers as you gear for fall you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs has helped here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. It's something I've used a ton in my professional life, an incredible resource that's helped me find a, a great job uh, in my industry. It is awesome. It is the number one professional resource in the world. Nothing exists like it. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network. Add your job and the people at LinkedIn will help use tools to filter through the candidates to get the right person in the door for you. It's a win-win, no wasted time. Simple tools, screening questions, make it easy to prioritize and focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience that you want to hire, that you want to prioritize. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. 
LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week, nearly 40 million people uh, visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Terms and conditions do apply. Uh, we're going to bring Ryan Brown back on, a 2023 quarterback prospect, just coming off the official visit to Wisconsin, our on official visit to Wisconsin. And Ryan, I'm, I'm going to share, um, I have some highlights from your last game up on your Twitter. We're going to just play a couple of clips and talk through them if you don't mind. Absolutely. Okay, let me pop this up, share screen. And if you are, guys, if you are listening on the podcast, I am so sorry. I can't get this to you uh, via audio. But if you're listening on, or if you're watching on YouTube, we have a couple of the, the clips up here from Ryan Brown's game against Wagner College. 19 of 23, 352, three touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Um, and let's hit play on this bad boy. You can see that, correct, Ryan? Yeah. Okay. So the first play in the shotgun, just talk me through what you're seeing here. Right, so they give us a too high look. Uh, I'm the gonna play go back we and called pause it here. So they gave us too high look. The play we called was seam routes from our slots with a slant from the outside receiver, and it was mirrored. Oh, I'm losing you. Sorry about that. I cut nope, up. No worries. Nope, you got me. I got okay. you back. Yep. Cool. So we had slants on the outside, seams from the number twos. They gave us two high safeties. So my left side receiver had a bender, so he's going to bend that seam into a post to break through the middle of the safeties. Um, they did a good job of covering it. The pocket collapsed. I rolled Which is out. what we're looking at now. I'm going to hit play yep. again. So, yeah, that's right where we're at now. Pocket collapsed. You're rolling out. I rolled out, uh, found him coming across, just – Stepped into it, put it on him, and then let him do the rest. And that's a great throw on the move. You're rolling out. You you didn't panic under pressure. You didn't tuck it and run. Um, you're an athletic quarterback, which we're going to see in a clip coming up. But kept the eyes downfield scanning. And that's a really accurate throw. Uh, he doesn't break stride. And as you can see, just takes it. He houses it. Yep. And uh, that, was, that was a huge play. I want to say at that point, I can't remember the score, but that was with about a minute 15 left in the half. All right, let's jump into this next one. I, I love that clip, by the way, because so many younger quarterbacks, so many older quarterbacks, um, you have legs are going to you. Ha you could have ran easily there 10, 15 yards untouched. Correct. Right. Yeah, no doubt. But I mean, eyes up, saw the playmaker, got him the ball in stride. Um, that's an, a, just an awesome play all the way around. Right. All right. Let's jump into this one. This one's going to show some of the mobility. What are we seeing here? Right. So I called the protection left. I knew I had an extra guy if he if he came. I was expecting him to drop back, but I had my 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 uh my eyes on him in my peripheral as I made my read. I saw him come through, so I set him up. That's why he missed inside. I got outside. I kept my eyes up. I actually almost threw this, but I I saw green grass to the end zone, so I just took it. Can, can I just ask what is that like to? Because this this uh this is a free rusher. He's got a beat on you. Uh, obviously, you you get to the outside of him. He doesn't keep leverage. You are a way better athlete than that dude. <laughs> What what is that like to be on the field and just be a much better athlete than some of the guys chasing you around? It's got to be a good feeling to know you can kind of do a lot of what you want to do out there. It's definitely a good feeling, but you know you got to stay humble um, and just play the game the way it's supposed to be played. Because at the next level, um, you're going to be playing against all dudes. Oh yeah. So you don't want to you don't want to get a big head in high school or in prep school in my case, and then get to college and then get shocked. Well, at the next level, that that dude is, you know, an Ohio State linebacker coming off the edge, right? right? A guy at Penn State who's going to be a second round pick in the league. So, no, that's a great mindset, man. Um, one more, we're going to do one more clip here. I, I I love this, by the way. I love the fact that you remember coverages and what you were doing on each individual play. That definitely shows the cerebral sides of your game. Um, all right. So yeah, we'll just let you walk us through this one. Let me go back to it now. You saw it. All right. Right. So this play, they gave us two high safeties again. They they sat a lot a lot of cover four. They varied from cover two to cover to cover four. So I was I started to I started my read on the corner to see if he would drop down. We had a fade on the outside with a ten yard out from our slot receiver. So I got my eyes on the corner. I saw that he was dropping, so I knew they were in cover four. I got my eyes to the middle of the field to try to hold the linebackers in the middle. Um, my receiver broke on his out. I was a little bit late because that, that linebacker was carrying him. 
Um, and then as soon as he dropped underneath, I put a little bit of air on, on the ball and put it right over that linebacker's head. So you once you kind of made your initial read there, you saw a linebacker carrying him. You knew you were going there. You just had to let it open, develop a little bit. Yep. And I Got knew I had, I had my running back over the middle. So if that linebacker stayed out there with him and did a good job covering him, I had my back wide open because of where the linebacker was. Oh, that's awesome, man. Let me see here. I think I had one more at, right after this. Let me see. Okay. Hey, here's here's uh, an interesting one to me because, again, this is kind of an example of what we talked about earlier. Uh, Wisconsin, I think with Bobby Ingram, is going to evolve a little bit from the passing game standpoint. But these are the type of throws that a lot of times you're not going to get out of Wisconsin. You know, it's more pro style. It's not quite as much of this. And you kind of already answered that in terms of you want to be balanced. You want to go to a place where – you're, you're leaning on the run, play action, deep outs, that kind of stuff. Um, I, I want to keep talking about your game a little bit here. We talked about – I'm going to stop sharing the screen, by the way, because I think we're done there. Stop sh screen. Okay. We talked a little bit about EA Sports, NCAA. You said you played as a kid. We, that game is coming back much to the delight of millions, millions of college football fans. Absolutely. I can't wait. You're going to be in it. Um, I have no doubt that you're going to be a, a D1 quarterback when it's said and done. You're going to be in it. I'm going to ask you to rate yourself on, on four NCAA EA sports categories. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. Arm strength. Arm strength. I'd have to give myself about a 93 to start. It'll go up as I prove myself a little bit more. But right now, that's where I'll put, that's where I'll put it. That's good, man. I love it. Um, accuracy. Accuracy, 99. All day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the I'm I love going, the I'm going 82%. I'm – on the season, I'm averaging 75% completion, so that's a, that's about 99 for me. Yeah, I love it. Speed. Speed. I'd probably say about an 88. I I can I can run. Some people don't think I can run as well as I can because I I don't run unless I really have to. I do I do a really good job of keeping keeping my eyes up and trying to make throws as often as possible. Cause I'm a quarterback, but if I have to run, I definitely can. And people shouldn't get that, get that twisted. Well, we, I see it on film. Like if anybody, honestly, again, I'm not just saying that cause you're here. I mean, I went back and watched some of your, your film from high school in Florida at Venice. Um, even the clip we just saw, like you can get to the edge. You can definitely move. I think sometimes people see a six, four, are you, you're, you're listed at six, five, are you six, four or six, five, six, three. I'm six, four and three quarters or like six, four and seven eighths. Okay. Yeah. And that fits right into what I was going to say. A lot of times people see a six, five ish, six, four ish quarterback and they think they're more of a pro style statue. You know, a lot of the littler guys can run, but you can definitely move. Um, so I think 88 is fair. Last one. You ready? Awareness. So, you know, how well do you go through your reads? How well do you see, see defense? 99. No doubt. I love it. That's, I love the confidence. That's, that's the name of the game. If you can't do that, you, sh you gotta be, you better be playing another position. That's, that's everything at quarterback. I mean, and we just we just went over those plays, and it's four or five days later, and I can tell you exactly the look they gave me, and that's from film and just preparing yourself. So that's ninety nine for sure. No, the pre the preparation is is easily apparent. How how much time do you spend going through film? Like if you just play a game, how much time are you going to spend chopping that up? Well, watching my own game about an hour and a half, but leading up to the game, watching film on the other team's defense, an hour and a half a night at least. Cause that's like, that's everything. Like if you want to win a game, it starts there. And then by the time you get on the field, you've seen their coverages a million times. You know exactly what you're going to do. I love it. What, what part of your game um, are you working on now? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's a lot of things. It's a broad question, but where do you think you have the most growth to happen? Maybe it's a better way to put it. Um, I think I do a good job of this, but I definitely think it's something to get better at is, just having a better pocket presence, being able to sit in there, step up, take a hit, and make a throw, because that's what that's what separates a good quarterback from a great one is can you know you're going to take a hit, throw a ball right where it needs to be, and like, because that's half of the throws in the NFL or in college is you're going to take a hit, throw the ball, get back up, and do it again. And I have no problem with taking hits. I just got to work on my pocket presence and, uh, yeah. No, I love it. Um, coming up, we're going to do one more quick segment. I, I'm really fascinated by Ryan's journey from Florida to New York, the prep school route. Um, we're going to talk about that coming up next on Lockdown Badgers.
All right. Thank you, everyone, again, for tuning into Lockdown Badgers, making this one of your first listens every day. A great guest today, Ryan. Um, before we get started in this last segment, again, very, very thankful for your time here. Um, you've been very generous. Uh, where can people follow you? If, you know, social, whatever you got going on, where can they keep up with uh, your games at Milford Academy? My Twitter. My Twitter is Ryan Brown with an E at the end of Brown XB. Um, I post everything on there. I post my, my game highlights. Um, I post my stats. I put everything out there for everybody to see. No, that's awesome. And that's where I found uh, the highlights that we streamed earlier. So definitely a worthwhile follow. We're going to link that in our show notes as well. So uh, Badger fans, definitely go check him out. Follow along as he's on this awesome journey. Uh, Ryan, I really want to start here because I'm fascinated by this journey. So I was going back watching some of your, your high school film in Florida. And for those we mentioned earlier, but for those who don't know, you won a state title in 8A. Talk, for people who aren't familiar with what that means, what is 8A competition in Florida? 8A competition is every player that you're going to watch on Saturday. I mean, especially in Florida, those guys are four-star DBs every every week, four-star DNs every week, four-star linebackers every week. We were playing against some dudes, and they were well-coached dudes too. So, I mean, that was that was huge for my growth and for my experience to – to be able to play against players like that. And I think that's why I'm where I am right now. And I think that's where I'll be, where I'm going to be. What was that like to win a state title? Like that feeling, um, is that describable? I I can't say it's describable, but if I had to put it in words, it was, it was unreal. It was, it was everything you kind of play the game for is to win. And it was kind of like, what now? Because every playoff game, every game was, all right, just take it one game at a time to the state championship. And then we did it. And we were like, wow, like, that's it. And it's just, it was, it was a surreal, surreal feeling. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys kind of crushed everybody in the playoffs that year, right? I mean, even, yeah. even through the state title, like, I don't even think there, I don't think there was a close game that entire run. Why was your team so dominant besides great quarterback play, of course? Our coaching, our coaching was unbelievable. Our coaching was everything. Um, the film that we watch, I would, I would go in with the coaching staff and watch film with them as well. Um, learning, learning from those coaches on how they watch film was, I think the biggest thing for my development to this point, because they've coached at big colleges. They've been OCs, head coaches, um, and they, they just prepared you for every possibility ever. So every time I saw something, I had seen it before, and they were unbelievable. That's awesome. Um, I want to kind of wrap up here. And again, thank you so much for all your time, man. You you went from there to a prep school in New York. What is that process like? Uh, I think a lot of people are fuzzy on how that even happens. Or, or do, you, do prep schools recruit you? Did you have a list of prep schools you were looking at? So I had I had a few prep schools I was checking out. Um, I wasn't sure where I was going to go. I knew I was going to do it because I wanted to be able to reclassify myself into the class of 2023 because I felt extremely under-recruited and I knew my worth. So I, I kind of gave myself the year to do it. My dad played at Boston College, and he knows the head coach at Milford, which is my prep okay. school. He, uh, he played at Boston College two years before my dad, so they have a bunch of the same friends. So when they got on the phone with each other – it, it just felt like the perfect fit. I talked talked with him, and I loved it. No, it sounds awesome. Man. It seems like you found a great fit. Um, I, I want to finish up here. Last question, and then, again, uh, we're going to link all your social media stuff. I, I really encourage all Badger fans, go go check Ryan out. Uh, the film is really fun to watch. Very, very talented kid. Uh, I'm not a kid anymore, sorry. But very, very talented quarterback. Um, I want to finish here with, with your commitment. You just came off the Wisconsin unofficial. Um, Purdue's been, you've been in contact with Purdue. Obviously, that's a place that develops quarterbacks and, and passing games. Uh, do you have a timeline on your commit on your recruitment? Is there a, Do you want to get it wrapped up sooner than later, or is this finding the right fit the more important spot here? I mean, it's both. I'd like to get it wrapped up sooner rather than later because, obviously, you don't want to wait till the last second. But at the end of the day, I do want to find the best fit for me because that's, that's what the most important thing is. And I've been talking with Florida State, Purdue, and Wisconsin. Wisconsin's the only visit that I've been on so far. I've been talking about visits with Purdue and Florida State. Um, 
and I'm just going to go through the process with them as they're going through the process with me too. Um, and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying what I'm hearing from them. I, I think everything is very positive for me right now. And I think, I think everything will work itself out sooner than sooner rather than later, which is, which works out because I don't want to wait too long. For sure. For sure. What, what kind of quarterback last question I promise. And I told you I'd run out of time before I run out of questions. Um, but what kind of quarterback to wrap up on this is whatever division one program you're going to end up at getting. They're getting a guy that, I mean, loves the game. That's, that's the biggest thing. Like, I don't play to for people to know my name. I don't play for uh, whatever reason to make money to go to school for free. Like I play because I love playing football, and that's like the biggest thing for me is uh, playing the game the way it's supposed to be played competitively. Um, and you don't leave anything out in the field. You just put everything out out on there because you know if, if you if you don't give every single ounce of effort that you have. The rest of the rest of until you play another game, you're gonna you're gonna feel it. That's awesome, man. Some some college is gonna be lucky to get you, brother. Um, that's awesome. He is Ryan Brown, uh, 2023 quarterback uh, recruit. Really appreciate the time. Uh, for everyone listening, thank you so much for tuning into Lockdown Badgers. Make it one of your first listens. Uh, we're gonna get this out to you guys tomorrow and continue talking as the season goes forward. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for jumping on the show. I really do appreciate it. And uh, we're going to definitely track as, as you continue going on through recruitment and your season. Sir, thank you for having me on. And for everyone else on Wisconsin, and we'll talk tomorrow.